Hello everyone, uh, my name is Boko, uh, thank you for coming. Today I want to talk about the political and historical aspects of the languages uh, spoken in the former country of Yugoslavia. Uh, it's uh, an interesting topic and it might give you a deeper insight and understanding of our language. <clears throat> so I've decided to make this video. Uh, this is not a Serbian lesson. I will speak English, only English today, but I will uh, I will put Serbian CC so you can still practice if you want. Uh, let's begin. Uh, Yugoslavian languages or languages of Yugoslavia are the languages spoken in the former Yugoslav states. They are uh, mainly Indo-European uh, languages and dialects, uh, namely dominant South Slavic varieties, Serbo-Croatian, Slovene and Macedonian. So uh, the languages of, of natives, uh, this is the list of languages of native people. Um, so of course we have Serbo-Croatian, it's a pluricentric language and dialect, a continuum of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Montenegro and Serbia. So we have Bosnian language, standard form of Serbo-Croatian used in Bosnia and Herzegovina after breakup of Yugoslavia. Croatian language, standard form of Serbo-Croatian used in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina after breakup of Yugoslavia. Montenegrin language, standard form of Serbo-Croatian <laughs> used in Montenegro after breakup of Yugoslavia. Serbian language, standard form of Serbo-Croatian used in Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, after the breakup of Yugoslavia. Slovene language, language of Slovenia and Macedonian language, language of North Macedonia, previously known as uh, Macedonia. As you can see, uh, these languages are standardized forms of one single language. Slovene and Macedonian, of course, are different. Uh, they are similar to Serbian. Um, I would say I could understand Macedonian pretty well. Um, couldn't say the same about Slovenian. Uh, I guess it is pretty different and unrecognizable. I think they understand us though. I was only talking about these four languages, Serbian, Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin, they're basically the same. So we were a part of the same country, you know, and Serbia was kind of the central part of it. So everybody understood Serbo-Croatian, the culture, music, movies. It was something that we all shared. So, you know, for example, especially older Slovenians uh, would understand our language, Serbian, um, and so on. So as you could see, it was originally called Serbo-Croatian all the way back in Yugoslavia and uh, it is the language we're talking about today, our language, uh, that, that's the only one. Um, I just call it Serbian for short, it's, it's just more convenient and I am from Serbia so I'm a little biased I guess. Uh, although I definitely acknowledge that it is Serbo-Croatian, Srpsko-Hrvatski, of course. So officially, Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian and Montenegrin are standard forms of one language, Serbo-Croatian. Bosnian as a separate language was first recognized in 1995, uh, while Montenegrin became the official language of Montenegro uh, with the ratification of a new constitution on 22nd uh, October 2007. Uh, so that information actually tells you that it was hard uh, to even make a standardized form. It, it was far hard to differentiate it because it's one language. Um, of course, there are different dialects and there are different sub-dialects, but that's a different thing. 
you know, even within Serbia, there are so many different dialects um, that are more different between each other uh, than from Croatian or Bosnian. So there are these local differences, you know, southerners, uh, the northern Serbia. But uh, if you buy an official textbook, Bosnian textbook, Serbian, Montenegrin, they will be the same. Same grammar rules, vocabulary, pronunciation even. I'm talking about textbook language. And that's a fact. So, you know, people even joke about it. You have translations in all of these four or three languages you know, on food, beverage, packages, and declarations. But these are actually identical sentences that they put one next to each other. You know, the only difference is that Serbian uses Cyrillic. So, you know, there are two versions. Mm, Serbian is practically uh, the only European standard language uh, whose speakers are fully functionally digraphic. Um, using both Cyrillic and Latin alphabets. Anyway, um, you know, I have a hard time explaining this uh, to some people. Uh, they say, oh, my wife or my husband is from Bosnia, so I want to focus on Bosnian. I want to learn specifically Bosnian and not Serbian. Uh, let's focus specifically on Bosnian. I'm like, okay, that's impossible because it is the same language and if you're especially if you're an absolute beginner uh, if you don't know anything you're just starting with basic words uh, sentence construction there will be no differences for example if, if you don't speak English and you just you, you've just started learning it you cannot ask your teacher to to teach you British or Texan or South African English right you, you start by learning some simple rules, basic vocabulary, um, basic sentences uh, or sentence constructions. So that, that has to be the same in every English speaking country or region. So maybe when you're an intermediate speaker, you could hire a teacher from a specific area, of course, and then try to learn their dialect, their slang. So what, I, what I'm talking about, uh, are to be specific are you know Serbian, Bosnian and Montenegrin these three having said that I have to admit that Croatian is a bit different from from the other three it's still 100% understandable it's still 100% the same language uh, but it has some differences okay they have a lot of words that they use over there some sentence construction or just some grammar slight grammar differences how they call certain things um, but we also use their words you know their words and they use our words so it's not really uh, you know anything uh, completely isolated you know uh, by the way there is a separate video where I'll show you the actual language differences uh, it's kind of like part two of this uh, story this video and uh, that other video is called Vocabulary, Grammar and Pronunciation Differences Between Serbian and Croatian. So if you're into that, if you want to see that, you can check it out uh, after you watch this video. So Serbo-Croatian, Srpsko-Hrvatski. Uh, let's talk about this. Serbo-Croatian generally goes by the individual names Serbian or Croatian, Bosnian or sometimes Montenegrin. It is also called BCS, I've heard about this, you know, Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian. In the mid 19th century, Serbian writers and linguists uh, standardized the Serbian Cyrillic alphabet and Croatian linguists uh, standardized the Croatian Latin alphabet. So in 1850, Serbian and Croatian writers and linguists signed the, uh, the Vienna Literary Agreement declaring their intention to create a unified standard. Uh, thus, a uh, complex bivariant language appeared, uh, which the Serbs officially called Serbo-Croatian or Serbian 
or Croatian, and the Croats called Croatia Serbian or Croato Serbian. So World War II was a tough period. Some nationalist ideas reemerged, and uh, there were initiatives to separate uh, the two languages. However, in 1945, the decision to recognize Croatian and Serbian as completely separate languages was reversed in favor of a single Serbo-Croatian. Uh, in the communist post-war Yugoslavia, 60s, 70s, uh, ethnic issues eased to an extent, but the matter of language remained uh, uh, blurred and unresolved. So already in 1954, major Serbian and Croatian writers, linguists and literary critics uh, backed by Matica Srpska and Matica Hrvatska signed the Novi Sad Agreement which in its first conclusion stated uh, Serbs, Croats and Montenegrins share a single language with two equal variants that have uh, developed around Zagreb that's the western and Belgrade the eastern so the agreement insisted on the equal status of Cyrillic and Latin scripts and of Ikavian and Ijekavian pronunciations Ekavica and Iekavica. It also specified that Serbo-Croatian should be the name of this language in official contexts while in unofficial use the traditional Serbian and Croatian were to be retained. Um, Yugoslavia recognized all minority languages, by the way. You know, newspapers, radio and television studios uh, used 16 languages for all the minorities, like Albanian on Kosovo, Hungarian in Vojvodina, etc. But no language was official. There was no official language on a federal level. So considering that three quarters of the population actually spoke Serbo-Croatian, it functioned as the unofficial lingua franca, and as I said, everybody basically spoke Serbo-Croatian. Unfortunately, we know that Yugoslavia broke up into six independent countries uh, in the 90s. So what happened with the official status of the languages? That's what we are talking about here. Let's take a look at Bosnian first. Bosanski. Until the 1990s, the common language in Bosnia and Herzegovina was called Serbo-Croatian. Uh, the language uh, was called Bosnian or recognized as an official language in the 1995 Dayton Accords and is concluded by observers to have received legitimacy and international recognition at the time. Uh, Bosnian uses both the Latin and Cyrillic alphabets. Uh, the modern Bosnian standard uh, took shape in the 1990s, in the 2000s. Croatian, Hrvatski. Since 1990, in the Croatian constitution, it has been written that the Croatian language is the official language of the Republic of Croatia and this is a fact that uh, regardless of such declarations, statements or one's desires will not change nor can such an action in any way endanger that. Okay, so only from the 1990. Uh, Croatian is commonly characterized by the Ijekavica pronunciation, the sole use of the Latin alphabet and a number of lexical differences in, in common words that set it apart from standard Serbian. Most Croatian linguists uh, regard uh, Croatian as a separate language that is considered key to national identity. So I completely understand that. Uh, the 1967 declaration on the status and name of Croatian literary language uh, in which a group of Croatian authors and linguists uh, demanded greater autonomy for Croatian is viewed in Croatia as a linguistic policy milestone 
that was also a general milestone in national politics. So it's more of a political question, identity. Um, at the 50th anniversary of this declaration though, at the beginning of 2017, a two-day meeting of experts from Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia and Montenegro um, was organized in Zagreb, Zagreb at which the, the text of the declaration uh, on the common language of Croats, Bosniaks, Serbs and Montenegrins was drafted. Uh, the new declaration has received more than 10,000 signatures so it's you know widely supported it states that in Croatia Serbia Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro is a common polycentric standard language uh, consisting of several standard varieties uh, similar to the existing varieties of German English or Spanish now we have Montenegrin, Crnogorski. Montenegrin is a normative variety of the Serbo-Croatian language mainly used by Montenegrins and is currently the official language of Montenegro. Montenegrin uses both uh, Latin and Cyrillic uh, scripts. So the idea of a standardized Montenegrin uh, language um, you know, s separate from Serbian, only appeared as an idea in the 1990s during the breakup of Yugoslavia. Montenegrin became the official language of Montenegro with the uh, ratification of a new constitution on October 22nd, 2007. So before that, they had been speaking Serbian. Uh, you know, Serbian had been the official language all, all that time until 2007. Serbian, Srpski. What can I say, guys? The name Serbo-Croatian was just changed into Serbian. And there you have it. We have our, you know, language that we use, that we're using. We've been using it for a long time. It is the standardized variety of the Serbo-Croatian language. Uh, mainly used by Serbs. It is the official and national language of Serbia. We've already mentioned that, that it's digraphic. So we definitely use both Cyrillic and Latin alphabets whenever we want and whichever we want. There are six dialects and many sub-dialects in Serbian. And as I said before, I think uh, Croatian, for example, in Northern Serbian and much more similar, you know, between each other than, for example, Northern and Serbian dialects. They're so different. Fast forward to 2017, the Declaration on the Common Language, Deklaracija o zajedničkom jeziku, was signed by a group of NGOs, non-governmental organizations, as I, you know, mentioned before, and uh, ling linguists from former Yugoslavia. It states that all variants belong to a common, single, polycentric language. So I believe that is a great step towards. Uh, living behind the nationalists' ideas and coming together in order to celebrate, preserve and nurture our beautiful language. In summary, I'll use a quote from the Journal, uh, journal of Slavic Linguistics written by John Frederick. An examination of all the major levels of language shows that BCS is clearly a single language with a single grammatical system. Now, I hope you liked this lesson. If you wish to have a live Serbian or English one-on-one -on -one lesson with me, uh, you can find me on Italki. It's a perfect platform for learning languages, for finding language partners. Uh, it has a great community. Everybody's there learning languages and having fun. Um, you will also get a $10 coupon or just basically a $10 gift uh, after you sign up through the link that I've posted in my video description. Um, so good luck. You can also check my website, Facebook page and Instagram account guys. And until next time, take care.
Bye bye. Vidimo se zdravo.